Hello and good afternoon. It's 2 p.m. And if it's 2 p.m. on Sunday, it's time for Ask Dr. Lulu. Hi, my name is Dr. Lulu and I'm coming to you live from the beautiful campus of Texas Tech University. I don't know if you can see it in the background in Lubbock, Texas. My beautiful man-child is here for his orientation. My baby's going to college and Mama Bird got to be there. I'm a proud Raider mom. So this is Sunday afternoon and I'm coming at you from Lubbock, Texas. We're going to talk about, we're going to continue our series on how to raise that beautiful, well-rounded, cultured, productive teen. Now, before I start this afternoon, I have to take a moment to say happy birthday to me, Madre. It's my mother's birthday. Yes, she's 30 again. So happy birthday, mommy. How are you? Hope everything is well. Anyway, so let's get started. For all of you who are joining me for the first time ever, my name is Dr. Lulu. I'm your board certified pediatrician. I'm, I'm a veteran, I'm a mom, I'm a wife. And I just am passionate about what I do. And anybody who knows me knows I want to save one more teenager, don't I? Okay, so we're going to talk about how to raise those teens. If you're joining me live, hi, I think I see Shade. Hey, Shade. I see Miss, um, I see a couple of people. I can't read it very clearly. I think it's Miss Ellis, HF. Oh, I'm outside, so I can't really read. Yes, Ellis HF um, Maxwell. Yes, hi. And I see Greta Kelly Mix. Hi. And I see Priyanka Draw. Hi, y'all. Thank you for joining me. It's, sun it's Sunday afternoon. If I'm a little frazzled, it's because my baby is going off to college. My second baby is going off to, to college. I like to call him my middleman child, my MMC. He's going off to college, so I'm here at his orientation. So it's a little bittersweet for me, but. Um, I'm going to make it. So last week, I know we talked about, what did we talk about? Um, we talked about four more qualities. I'm going to grab my book in a minute. Four more qualities um, that we need to instill in our kids, in our kids, in order to raise them to be well-rounded. Hi, hi, Jean. Bonjour. And in order to raise them to be well-rounded um, teenagers. Let me just grab my cheat sheet, okay? Give me one second. So yes, last, the first weekend we talked about charity, love, patience, gratitude, and empathy, and I think respect. And then last week we talked about imperfection, how nobody's perfect. Hi, Emmeline. Oh no, I think that's Titi. Hi, Titi. Hi, no one is, how no one is perfect. We thought about humility. We talked about benevolence, one of my favorite things to talk about. And, and this week we're going to talk about um, four more qualities. So please bear with me if I get a bit emotional this week, okay? Um, um, it's not even easy for Mama Bird to say goodbye to another of her baby birds, but I guess it's going to happen. But you know, I made a promise to you guys, come rain or shine, I'm going to be here at 2 p.m. every Sunday talking about how to raise well-rounded teenagers. So this is episode three, okay? So first thing we're going to talk about today is self-esteem. Oh my God. Yes. How do we instill? Hi, mom. My mom is here. Hello. Happy birthday, mi amor. Mi amor. Feliz cumpleaños, mama. How are you? Sorry, I have not had any time to call you because I've been here trying to say goodbye to my middleman child. Hi, mom. Anyway, so we're going to get going. Um, so first thing, self-esteem. Esteem, I'm going to define that. So self-esteem is defined as confidence in one's abilities or one's worth. But the one that I prefer is confidence and satisfaction in one's worth. So like we said the first two weeks, um, we're going to continue the theme of if you're going to be a good parent, if you're going to raise that well-rounded child, you must lead by example. So again, we're back to the same topic. You have to lead by example. You have to have your own good solid dose of self-esteem in order to instill it in your child. Hi, Ellis. Sorry I messed up your name early on. How are you? Um, so you have to have your own good solid dose of self-esteem to be able to instill it in your child. Confidence is one of those things that I know you can fake it till you make it. Trust me, I do. 
every day, every Sunday afternoon when I pick up the phone or my computer to, to record these, I am shaking like a leaf. But you know what? The show must go on. I remember that um, Whitney Houston has said that every time before she, she went on stage, God rest her soul, she would always have butterflies in her stomach. Whitney Houston. So who am I, right? I'm trying to keep it real, y'all. I'm trying to keep it real. So take a minute, if you can, to invite your friends. If you have any friends who have teenagers, who have children, who know a teenager, who knows a child, a good neighbor, a sister, have them log on and let them join me today. And let's talk about um, other ways to raise well-rounded teens, okay? So self-esteem. So we're going to start by saying, parents, you have to love yourselves unconditionally. And then you love your child. You cannot instill that love in your kid unless you have a good solid dose of it. So I say, yes, love your child, but be careful. Hi, Vanessa. Be careful not to confuse loving your child with spoiling your child. I'm not about that. We're not going to raise any chiflado little kids running around. We're going to love them. But we're in, in as much as we love them, we're going to tell them also when it's enough, no, you can't do that. No, you can't have that. So self-esteem, you're going to praise your child as often as possible. When they've succeeded in doing something right, you have to say, yes, son, well done, good job. But not every time, because sometimes, too, when they don't do something right, you need to have enough love to correct them. Okay? And then... Um, you need to set realistic goals. Oh my goodness, yes. If you know your child has a rusty voice like mine, it's not okay to tell them they're going to grow up to be a soprano. We got to be realistic up in here. Yes, I can sing maybe bass alto, maybe, but I'm not singing soprano in nobody's choir. So you want to give your child, you want them to set realistic expectations. Yes, son, you can do it. But if you have two flat feet like my son Chidi does, you're not going to be no ballerina. And it's okay to tell them that. Well, guess what? You might be able to do something else, like maybe be in the marching band, or you can, I don't know, do something else that your flat feet are not going to show and they're not going to hurt. I'm just talking about keeping it real with your kids when it comes to building self-esteem. Because nothing breaks somebody's spirit than telling them that, can, that they can do something when deep inside, deep within you, you know that they really cannot. And as a mother and as a cheerleader and even as a father, you want to give them that um, cheerleading, you want to cheer, lead them, you want to cheer them on, but you want to be realistic with them. So please, please, and please, um, just like a child who wants to play sports, nothing builds up your self-confidence or your self-esteem like being in sports. I was an all-around sportswoman when I was a, a teenager, when I played, um, I played soccer in med school, I did long jump, I did a little bit of high jump, I did hurdles, I did 200 meters, four by one, four by four. I did all of that, and it built a lot of self-esteem and a lot of self-confidence in me. But in as much as I did that, I had to be realistic that when my team loses, it's okay. Not all of us are going to be Michael Jordan up in here, but at least we'll give it our best shot. So I say if you want to build self-esteem, encourage your child, set realistic expectations, encourage them every day, love on them, but be realistic be realistic so next thing we're going to talk about is um we're going to come back to the residents yes i will next thing we're going to talk about is maximizing talents so i'm going to give a story here those of us who have read the bible or whoever heard any story from the bible knows that there is a story of a rich man who had um i think he had 16 talents to give he was going on a trip and he gave 10 talents to one servant another servant he gives he gave five talents and yet another servant he gave one talent to the guy that he gave five talents he invested his five talents and produced five more the guy he gave 10 talents invested his invested his 10 talents and produced 10 more and the one crucial guy that he gave one talent to, what did he do? He hit the talent and gave it back to his boss when his boss came back. His boss was pissed. And he encouraged the guy, he praised the guy who was given 10 talents. Because what he did was he multiplied those talents. So what you're given, what talents you have, what raw talents you have, you want to multiply those talents and invest those talents and produce more. So what am I saying in essence? I'm good at talking. God knows I am. My mother would tell you that. And so one thing I'm not good at is, at is being quiet. So I'm going to be of best use in a place where I need my talking talents, i.e. 
pediatrics. I'm teaching all day. I'm talking all day. This is something that is good for me. Now, my wife, on the other hand, she's a quiet bird. She doesn't, she's a quiet woman. She doesn't talk too much. You are not going to do her any justice by putting her in a place where she needs to do a lot of talking. So that brings us back to the raising of your child, right? If you know your child has a talent, a raw talent like my son does, of playing musical instruments, please don't encourage him, even if he wants to, because sometimes kids don't know what is good for them. Don't encourage him to play sports or something that you know in your heart that he's not good at. What you do is you encourage his talents of music, you support his talents of playing music, and watch him blossom. Watch him do well. I have another son who plays the trumpet. Well, yes, a trumpet is a musical instrument, but it's not a flute, it's not a trombone. He also plays a ukulele. He's the one child that plays a left-handed ukulele. And what do I do as a parent? I encourage him to practice that which he's good at and get even better at it. Keep it keep keeping it real all the time. You want them to invest in their talents and produce more of that which they're already good at. So yes, you want to maximize their talents. I'm going to give you another example of people that we know in these days that have practiced and practiced and made it perfect in their talents. Four names, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, and Shaq. These are four big time basketball players and shot callers. Now, Kobe Bryant is a shooting guard. And thanks to my son, Dubem, who gave me all this information about who plays what. Kobe Bryant is a shooting guard. Steph Curry is a point guard. Um, Shaq was a center and Michael Jordan was a shooting guard. Now, if you want a good shooting guard, you don't get Shaq. You don't get Shaq. You get you some Kobe Bryant. You get you some Mike, Michael Jordan because he has practiced and practiced and is perfecting his act of being a shooting guard. I hope that makes some sense. What I'm saying is, it, yes, you want to encourage your child, but if you know he has a talent of singing, of swimming, of dancing, don't waste your time really telling him to do something else that you know he's not really good at. He's probably going to fail, and you know not everybody learns from failure. For some people, when they fail, it becomes a murderer of their, of their blessings, of their success. And so if you know that your child is good at something, I say encourage that which they're already good at. And please give me some thumbs up if you agree with me because I'm seeing a lot of people joining us today. I see Vanessa, I see Tala. Hi guys, give me thumbs up if, some thumbs up if you agree with me that if your child is good at something, I know Tala's daughter is good at rowing and I know Tala is gonna push her kid to practice, practice, practice that which she's already good at so she can be even better don't put me in the library as a librarian really seriously now that did happen to me in elementary school I think I was a bit too noisy in class and they would send me to the library as punishment but because I was also an avid reader guess what that worked because I happen to love books I love words I love to write and I love to read and so putting me in the library in a way was also productive for me specifically because I just happened to also love to read but generally I'm a noise maker so don't put me in a library that's basically my message with that okay the next thing we're going to talk about today is resilience and the definition of resilience is the ability to bounce back yes you want to bounce back like a rubber band so you want to teach your child resilience you want to instill in them that ability to get up and try again and it reminds me of the song by Aliyah. We all know Aliyah. She had a song called, If You Don't Succeed. I don't know the name of the song, but it, was, it went something like, If You Don't Succeed, or If At First You Don't Succeed, Pick Yourself Up and Try Again. You just have to try again. And so nobody started riding a bicycle knowing how to ride a bike. Give me a thumbs up if you agree with me, all you moms out there. Your son who now is able to ride a bike with his hands off the bars did not wake up one morning knowing how to ride a bike. He woke up that morning and you told him to get up on the bike. First of all, he was afraid of the bicycle. He had to start with maybe a tricycle and then he got on the bicycle and then he was riding the bicycle. He fell off a few times. There's always pain. A lot of times when you're learning something, there's some pain, but you got to get up and pick yourself up, dust yourself up and keep trying again. And he's only going to get better because he's practicing and practicing and that, my dear friends, will make him perfect. So moms out there, if your child 
is trying to learn something, it's okay for them to feel the pain and feel the burn, but it's through that burn that their muscles get formed and their memories get formed and they're going to get better at that which they're doing. So resilience is the ability to recover and adjust you know, it is normal to fail. It's normal to feel pain and disappointment. But if that child, if you instill resilience in that child, they're going to learn how to bounce back. They're going to learn, learn how to adjust. And they're going to learn how to um, recover like your muscles do during a workout. The next thing we're going to talk about, which is kind of similar to resilience, is perseverance. Perseverance is staying the course. Staying the course. I do keep it real. I do know that, yes, it might be hard sometimes, but you want to stay the course. You don't want to give up. If you see it in your child, if you see that your child has got it in them, you want to con continue to encourage them to stay the course. There will be sometimes even I tell my mom, I can't do it. It's too hard. But what does she say to me? Stay the course. Continue. Keep it up. Like um, the first, former first lady of Nigeria would say, continue. Continue. Stay the course, don't give up. All the encouraging things that moms tell our kids. And when you tell your child to stay the course, when it comes from your heart, your child knows that my mom is there. She's rooting for me, she's my number one cheerleader. She will, or he will stay the course. Because when life goes hard and things go down and life goes bad, you want to reach deep down and get that spirit which your mother has instilled or your father has instilled in you. I don't mean to be partial to moms, but I'm a mom, but that doesn't mean that fathers do not instill um, courage and other things in their children. So yes, absolutely, my father was very instrumental to who I am today. So, but you do want to encourage your kids to stay the course and persevere. It's not going to be easy. Rome was not built in a day, but definitely if they stay the course, everything is going to work out in the future. Everything is going to work out in the end. So that is the, those are the four qualities that I have for us today. I do have one more thing to mention. Um, competence is a word that I like. You cannot be competent at something. You cannot be good at something. The definition of competence is the ability to do something successfully and efficiently. You cannot be successful at doing something. You cannot be um, efficient at doing something unless you have those things we talked about today. Self-esteem um, and confidence, maximizing your talents, building up resilience and building up perseverance and persistence and staying the course. You will not be able to be competent at doing it unless you absolutely stay the course. Hi, Lavake, I see you. Oh, belated happy um, birthday, 50th birthday, girl. And also um, belated congratulations to your daughter for graduating from college. So for those of you who joined me a little bit late, I am here at the beautiful campus of Texas Tech University here in Lubbock, Texas. Texas. My middleman child is going to college, y'all. So I'm here to um, encourage him and um, be with him and be his cheerleader and have, I have to believe in my heart that I have instilled self-esteem and I've maximized his talents for him. I've built in some resilience in him and I'm hoping, hoping that he's going to persevere because architecture is not going to be easy, but if I have done my work, my son is going to come out on top. And that is what I want you guys to continue to instill in your kids today. So for those of you who have, been, who have been able to join me today, thank you very much. Hook me up, hook up with me on Instagram and on Twitter. I also have a YouTube video, um, YouTube channel, and I think I'm on LinkedIn as well. Try to find me there, and of course I'm on WhatsApp. You guys know, you see me there all the time. So thank you so much for joining me. My brand new baby is my blog. It's called Words by Black Butterfly because I am the ultimate black butterfly. I wish you guys to have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. Please give me a thumbs up. God bless you guys. Spread the word. Join me again next Sunday. And um, if it's 2 p.m., it's definitely going to be time for words um, for um, Ask Dr. Lulu. So check me out on my blog, Words by, blog, by Black Butterfly. Read it, enjoy it, leave a comment, and follow me. And I'll see you guys again next Sunday. One more time, happy birthday to my mom. Feliz cumpleaños, bon anniversaire, and I'll see you and I'll probably talk to you before I see you soon. All right, people, I don't want to go, but I have to be with my baby. Um, 
He's going to wonder where I am. I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. Hi, I'm fun. Auntie, how are you? <laughs> Thank you for joining me live. I appreciate it. Um, God bless you all. I have to go. Keep up the good work. Keep smiling. It is within you. Lead by example. Live by example. And I'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye. Do I know how to turn this thing off? All right. <laughs>